We begin tonight with a story of courage and survival. Simone O'Brien is lucky to be alive, the victim of a brutal attack by a man she had trusted who tried to murder her with a baseball bat. She is bravely telling her story for the first time in the hope of saving other women. My life and my family's lives have changed. Having to look at myself in the mirror each day, seeing myself is scary and makes me frustrated. I cry all the time now, can't get out of bed some days. It just seems endless. 24 hours was all it took for Simone O'Brien's peaceful world to intersect with a monster. Trying her luck at online dating, the mother of three met this man, real estate agent, Glenn Cable. Months later, without warning, he viciously attacked her with a baseball bat and left her for dead. Tonight, for the first time, Simone reveals how she became the target of a well-camouflaged predator. It just makes me cringe to think that a person could just hit somebody and keep hitting them. Her remarkable survival. I wasn't prepared for what I found on the floor and her meticulous medical reconstruction. Everyone was concerned that Simone uh, may not uh, make it through. It's very brave of you to talk like this, I think. Why are you doing it? If I can help one female out there against violence against women, I'm happy to talk about what has happened. Let's go back to the beginning. It had been four years since her divorce when Simone warily decided to sign up to a popular dating site. Within hours, she matched with a charming man by the name of Glenn Cable. The two hit it off. In those early conversations, what did you two talk about? What made you think he might be all right? Um, I suppose I spoke about my children all the time. They were always first in my life. And um, he tried to tell me that he liked kids and he had no children. But since then I've found that to be a lie. What was his previous situation? Um, I found out in court he'd been married twice. Uh, to his first wife he had one child and to his second wife he had two. Okay, lie number one. After two months getting to know each other via okay. daily phone calls and text messages, Simone finally agreed to meet Cable. Just part of life to, to go that next step, I suppose. Was he pushing you for that? And no, I kept asking and I kept saying, no, I've got to work. I've got to work. Um, and then I, I, I did make time and say, well, we'll do this. That first dinner turned into regular dates and Cable was introduced to Simone's three children, Gabby, Ashlyn and Zach. What was he like with them? No, he was very good to them. He offered to, you know, either take them jet skiing or drop them off at their sports. But he got very jealous of them at the same time that they took up my time as well. Slowly, the true colours of this manipulative, controlling, pathological liar became increasingly obvious to Simone. He used to delete things on my phone and so I had to keep re-getting phone numbers of even friends because he just didn't even want me to speak to friends or anybody. He big noted himself a bit too, didn't he? Very too? much so. He told me he had property in America and property in Sydney and he was selling it and he was meeting with financial advisors, you know, to talk to him about his money and it. But to be honest, I never seen, like, I was the one paying for everything. With mounting doubts, Simone worked up the courage to end the relationship. Cable begged her to take him back and when she did, he asked her to marry him. Did he propose to you in front of the kids? Yes. Did that take you by surprise? It did, it did, and I think that was done because he knew that my kids were my world and I wouldn't say no in front of them. Gabby even said to me later on, she said, Mum, you took a long time to answer. 
and I know I did because I knew it wasn't right. Cable moved in with Simone and the kids and told them he was looking to buy a new family home. That purchase was never made. The real estate actually rang me and said, Simone, um, the accused has bought in a cheque today of $5 and he'd actually changed it to 45000 on the cheque as a deposit and they actually receipted it, the real estate. And um, I just had enough of all the lies. You called him the accused. Can you not, you don't say his name? No, I can't. It just makes me cringe to think that. I'm not just going to say a male, but a person could just hit somebody and keep hitting them. And I just, you know, I just can't say his name. So you get a phone call to say that he's used a dodgy cheque to pay the deposit on this house. And so there'll be no purchase of a house? Correct, yeah. And what did you do? I rang him to find out where he was. Don't come home. And I just said, I home. do not want nothing ever to do with you again. I've had with the lies. I never want to see you again. Leave myself and my children alone. Simone made that call to Glenn Cable at six minutes past six that night. At 16 minutes past six, Gabby would call an ambulance to her mother. In 10 minutes, Cable had arrived, taken Simone into the bedroom and beaten her senseless with a baseball bat. 10 minutes to shatter her body and her life. He just stormed in and asked, you know, can I, could he speak to me and I was obviously dubious about that. What are you doing here? Simone ushered him to the bedroom to talk, while her eldest two, Gabby and Ashlyn, were outside listening. Knowing he'd lost her, Cable snapped. He armed himself with a baseball bat he'd apparently hidden in the room, beating her mercilessly. I can still see the, the bat coming down on my arm, and I'm thinking, well, my arm's not going to protect me much longer because it was already broken. But I don't remember any, I don't feel or see the bat coming onto my face at all. Do you remember him getting the bat? I don't know how the bat got in the room or when he, I can't remember him picking it up. I would just remember being on the floor and then seeing it coming down on me and... Are you okay? You're just shaking? Yeah, no, it's just, I mean, it's just, yeah, I'm fine, yeah. Stop! Stop! I can remember being there thinking, how can someone do this to me? Or I thought I was going to die. I, I couldn't know how to get just to that end bit and you know, seeing my children just there. But At the door? Yeah, there's no way I could get them to come and try and tackle them because you know, I was thinking of the, the back getting onto them. We opened the door and ran and jumped on the bed like near mum and then we saw him hitting her with the baseball bat. To this day, Ashlyn, who was only 11 at the time, checks under the bed every night before she goes to sleep. Gabby, who's just a few years older, still holds a lot of anger and struggles to talk about it. And we were all just screaming and telling him to stop and he was like giving us these looks and like he kept swapping the ways of the bat, like took it to the flat end and just was banging it down and took it to the big end and was actually whacking her with it. That is a horrific thing for a, a kid to see. Are you scared? Um, I had a lot of adrenaline, so yeah, I was like scared of what I was seeing, but I just wanted to stop. And a bunch of kids come running out saying, he killed, he's killing my mum, he's killed my mum. The girls ran outside screaming for help and found their neighbours, Julius and Donnie, who didn't waste a minute. Did you have any second thoughts about running in? No, not really. First thing thing was, well, got to get in there and just ran in, really. He just sort of looked at us, had the bat in his hand, we were yelling out, drop the bat, drop the bat, and then just sort of looked, paused for a bit, and then dropped the bat. And then when we sort of dragged him outside, he said, I'm not going anywhere, I'm not going anywhere. And we just told him to shut up and stay there. It was pretty brave what you did. Has that ever occurred to you? Not really. It's just 
well, we've been brought up to bring everybody up, like families, and take care of everybody. Yeah. Uh, Simone's face had been smashed, absolutely smashed. Her face was unrecognisable. Um, couldn't make out any facial features at all. Radiographer Karen Roper lived on the other side of Simone. She heard the commotion and her medical instincts kicked in. She made a beeline for Simone, who at this stage was barely conscious. My first thought was I need to control the bleeding. Also had to be very careful because her face was mush. So I had to be very gentle. Um, so I put the towel over her face. And you were literally holding her head together, I understand. Yeah. And that's all I did, I just held it and I just talked to her. Did you surprise yourself? Yes, I did. <laughs> I think we do though. Um, I think it's human nature to want to help somebody. Um, I know, I, I, wouldn't, I didn't hesitate. And I, I think a lot of people would be the same. Uh, the neighbours were amazing. Uh, some of them put themselves in, in, the, in the line of fire, basically. Um, it would have been very dangerous, it would have been very confronting for them. Detective Senior Constable Jason Shea arrested Cable the night of the attack and says he was an unlikely perpetrator. I was a little bit surprised at his demeanour. He came across as a very calm person. He didn't show much emotion at all. Simone was rushed to Royal Brisbane Hospital for emergency surgery. These photos, blurred because they're too graphic and confronting, show Simone's body broken and her skull shattered. I've never seen anything like it in my life. And what I had to check to make sure I was at the right bed. Trevor O'Brien will never forget what doctors told him and the moment he saw his ex-wife unconscious and fighting for life. You need to prepare for the worst. That she was lucky to get through the operation and we're hour by hour. So I had to go home and I said, what about my children? And I had to go. I had to go home on my daughter's birthday and tell my three children, tell my three children that we might be going to see mum for the last time. I'm just preparing. I um, probably would see approximately 40 a year with domestic violence that uh, come through. None as severe as Simone. Simone's injuries were horrific. Her left arm was snapped in two places, resulting in a compound fracture. Her top jaw was smashed, so she could barely open her mouth two millimetres. Her nose and right cheekbone were broken, along with both eye sockets, and her skull was completely shattered. Simone was also left blind in one eye. We put all the bones back in the right position. Then we use very, very small titanium plates and screws to hold all the bones into position. Now Simone's face is full of titanium plates and screws holding everything together. The bones on Dr the skull, Anthony Lynham is Simone's maxiofacial surgeon. He, along with the neurosurgeons and plastic surgeons, have been vital in her recovery. The hardest thing we had to face as a surgical team was the bits that were missing and the plastic surgery team has done a wonderful job of, of trying to, to piece that, that bit back together again. What has been the impact on, on you emotionally? just lost my confidence. I'm scared to meet people. Um, I cry a lot. What changes have you noticed in her, Trevor? I think the world's definitely a different place to her and to my kids. Um, it's not as safe as it used to be. In April, Glenn Cable was found guilty of attempted murder and sentenced to 15 years jail. He'll be eligible for parole in 2025. How do you feel about the bloke who did this to her, Trevor? My feelings couldn't describe it. I've got no feelings at all. It's not nice what he did to her. <laughs> Since the attack, Simone and her family have moved interstate, but every couple of weeks she flies back to Brisbane for ongoing treatment at the Princess Alexandra Brain Rehab Unit. <laughs> Her entire focus now is for life to be close to the way it was. Well, let's go for a drive. And getting her driver's licence back is a pretty good start. Driving here today, it's, um, that's huge. It's, you don't know how, how proud I am. I, I might not show it of, of myself just to do something so simple like that. There is an unexpected twist in this tale, a silver lining if you like. 
After being divorced for six years, Simone and Trevor are in love again and the family is back together. Must be nice to get together with the family. We're older and wiser. <laughs> no, and I suppose we've always been close and it's made us closer. He's an amazing person and I can't thank him enough. It just happened. The kids have been through enough, so it's time that we put our act together and become the family we were used to be. How much have the medical bills cost, Simone? Have you, do you know? I'd, I'd hate to know. The list just keeps going. And none of that's covered by insurance? You can't claim no, that? No, no. Well, that's, that's huge. It's, that would be, it was it tens of thousands of dollars? Is it more than that? I, I would hate to, I, I suppose it's, it's been my job is my recovery. Yeah. And um, I focus on my recovery is, is my main goal. We might see if we can get you some help with your medical bills. Oh, Let's <laughs> see what we can do. <laughs> In your case, you had a terrible attack without any sort of violent prelude. But you also got yourself sucked into this situation, didn't you? Where you had doubts, you had misgivings and you were still there. Can you see how other women can get a little push or a little slap or a little punch or a shove and still stay? Can you understand? Yeah, yeah. totally. Why? You think they, the next day they might come with a big smile and then they, they try and push it under the carpet. Please just make sure it's, you know, every little false thing you don't think is right. I mean, look into it. I mean, it can change your life within minutes. And yeah, if you're feeling insecure, um, if you don't feel safe around someone who you're with or, you know, they can turn just so quickly. It's such a terrible story and she's been through so much and has so much still to go. If you'd like to help Simone with her recovery, we're in the process of setting up a charitable trust to help pay for her ongoing medical costs and rehabilitation. You can email your interest to aca at nine.com.au and we'll be in touch. And if of course you are concerned about domestic violence in your family or among your friends, you can call 1800 737 732.